Good evening to everyone. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. S. K. Pal giving me this opportunity to talk about the supracostal puncture and its complication. Just a moment. It's not moving. So to start with, uh, Palsar is the one who introduced me to India. So he has given me opportunity to perform life surgeries in his uh, life surgeries since 2008. I'm very much thankful to Dr. S.K. Pal, and I'm very glad to have a friend like you. So today I'm going to share about the supracostal puncture and its complications. Well, I start with this. This is a staghorn stone on the left side in 35 years male patient who underwent mini PCNL technique with the supracostal two punctures. I do not keep nephrostomy tube in most of the cases, unless the patient is having a uh, pyonephrosis. If you see these clips, these are two stitches between 10th and 11th and 11th and 12th. I hope it's clear, yeah? Okay. So after a few hours, this patient was this nick, taken to the ICU, done the chest X-ray. And this is the picture of chest X-ray. Then we did the ultrasound in this sitting position and we have uh, drained uh, with the syringe only, drained some hundreds of CC, which was found hydrothorax and patient got much better. So there are certain cases where we cannot avoid supracostal puncture. So if you see the picture number one, complete stag, bilateral stag horn, if you see the stone level between 11th and 12th, in such cases, either we have to go between 11 and 12 or between 10 and 11, no doubt. Picture number two, stag horn and multiple stones. We, we must make a supracostal puncture. Picture number three, large stone, narrow, um, angulated infundibulum, even flexible cannot reach in these situations. So case number four, single kidney, multiple stones in different calyx. Well, this was a paper in Journal of Indo-Urology. This was uh, upper pole axis for PCA annual, a total of 464. Supracostal, 170 cases out of uh, which nine patients, that is 5.3% in group needed intercostal drainage. This is a cross data uh, published in Journal of Urology in 2013. Total number of patients, 4,490. <clears throat> the overall complication rate was higher in the upper pole group with the higher incidence of hydrothorax. That is again 5.8%. So if you see the pulmonary complication with the supracostal, overall incidence uh, is less than 2%. If you go between 11th and 12th, that is somewhere around 10%. If you go between 11th and 10th, somewhere around 25%. We must learn how to utilize the pleural space intelligently to gain entry to the superior calyx without injuring the long parenchyma. If you see this picture, very nice picture. If you see the pleural reflection, it comes from middle, uh, middly, then middle part of the 12th rib and it goes laterally and upward. So in my regular practice, our puncture 70 to 80 percent is supracostal, but our puncture side is more lateral. If we go more middle, then there is a high chance of pleural injury. So I will be sharing you some of the videos. So this is my newly published paper, sorry. 
safety and efficacy of a single middle calyx puncture in mini PCNL technique. If you see this complication rate in mini PCNL, that is somewhere around seven to eight percent, out of which five percent fall in clavin grade one and grade two. About one to two percent of the cases, uh, the complication fall in clavin grade three and grade four. So complication is somewhere around major complication is one to two percent only. So as I mentioned that our puncture, 70 to 80% case is through the supracostal. If you notice this, our puncture is not more medial, our puncture is more lateral. Our aim is to go through the furnix of the calyx as you can see here. And if you see the angle, this is the desired angle in mini PCNL technique as all the stones are evacuated by means of irrigation and gravity. If I make a more a middle puncture, the triangle would be more angulated and stone evacuation is much more difficult. If you see this, supra 11 and supra 12, many people make puncture like this in conventional PCA in them. When you, when you go more middle puncture, then there is a higher higher chance of pleural complication. Many times we go between 10th and 11th, as you can see here, these are the safe uh, landmarks to do mini PCNL technique. If you see this, even as it is written in the book, you should not make an oblique track, but in a hydronephrotic kidney, if you go through the furnix of the kidney, you can even make a uh, oblique track. Once you pass your miniaturized scope, you can see nicely in the uh, nicely the pelvic calicial system. So this is also safe, and we can avoid pleural injury. The only thing we have to uh, make sure the angle. We should be very careful. You should not deep down. It should be just horizontally to the kidney. So this is another paper between the 10th and 11th intercostal space. Only the group two, that is between 10th and 11, found to have 5.1%. Well, this is a case of 45 years female patient. If you see here, right non-functioning kidney due to the upper ureteric stone and multiple stones on the left side whose Hounsfield units are somewhere around 17, very hard stone. And if you see the stone position, multiple stone, multiple uh, in the different calyx, anterior, posterior, uh, medial, lateral, everywhere. What I did, I did mini PCNL in this case. So this is a case who underwent pyelolithotomy some five years back. It's a single kidney. I made five tracks, one track from lower calyx, all four tracks, more lateral punctures. And patient was discharged after 48 hours with this picture. As I already mentioned, even with the 10 and 11 is very safe if you go more lateral puncture. That is close to the posterior axillary line. I found one paper from Professor Lee from Beijing. He doesn't use fluoroscopy. He does all the PCNL he does under ultrasound guidance. And if you see his result, that is 0.19% had pleural injury. It's an amazing result. Well, the role of CT scan in supracostal uh, punctures CT scan does not alter management protocol in majority of cases. Most of the patients get managed conservatively. This is one of my patients who underwent between 10th and 11th. The chest x-ray was taken next day, and this was the picture. But he was clinically asymptomatic. I did not do anything. I just advised him to take a long breath, and this is a picture after one week. And after two weeks, he got the complete recover. He was an asymptomatic patient. So most of the time, 
it resolves itself. So coming to the management and prevention, avoiding punctures over elementary, puncture during the expiratory phase of respiration, smaller uh, working track, ultrasound guided punctures, chest tube drainage if required, a large bone thoracoscopy tube for lung injury, and surgical intervention if hemothorax. So how we go to the kidney? This is entering from middle calyx. It's a supracostal, lateral puncture. Even in a mild hydronephrotic kidney with the miniaturized scope, this is a 12 frames, we can easily go to the upper pole, as you can see there. Next, this is the endo view. Entering from the middle calyx, advancing the sheet at the neck of upper pole, as you can see here, these are fragmented stones. We intermittently remove the telescope. These stone flushes out easily. Stay at here, at the neck of infundibulum. We do not need to advance the sheet. Just advance the 12 fringe scope. This is the upper pole. These are fragmented stones. Just pass the scope, give the water saline, and come out the scope. So these stones will be flush out easily. And we can completely clear all the stones without making supracostal punctures. I mean the upper pole punctures. This is one case entering from the lower calyx to the upper pole. So this is completely done under endo view. If there is any resistance, we do not ad uh, advance the scope. This is possible only with the miniaturized scope. If we, are, uh, we do with the conventional piscinal, this won't be possible. So this is how we can uh, avoid uh, upper pole puncture. This is another case, narrow infundibulum in the upper pole, entering from the lower calyx, advancing the scope in the upper pole. If there is a stone, fragment them into multiple pieces, and this stone flushes out easily through the tract. This is the end of view entering from the middle pole. And after mini piscinal technique, we can have a picture like this. And we can inspect in different calicial system entering from middle calyx. We can advance this scope in the upper pole without any difficulty. If there is a severely angulated, then there may be a uh, difficulty. And on table with the mini piscinal, te mini piscinal technique, we can confirm more than 90% of the stone clearance. This is a video entering from lower calyx to upper pole. And in some cases, if there is a stone in upper pole, we can sometimes push with the needle, giving the saline push. This technique I have learned from Paul sir. Thank you very much for this technique. And some cases are reported with the nephropleural fistula after supracostal percutaneous nephrolithotomy. All patients were treated conservatively, although one patient required thoracoscopy with decortication for persistent pleural effusion. So this is one case report I found in IJU by the Japanese friend, patient who was not relieved after insertion of the um, tube. Even after five days, he was not well, then he underwent this visual assisted thoracoscopy and abscess was there, abscess were observed in the uh, hemothorax and scar hole as you can see here and he got the picture like this. So I conclude my talk that mini piscinal provides high maneuverability and minimizes supracostal puncture hence decrease the complication rate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sanjay. So you mean by your talk that uh, although there should not be, we should not be scared. Uh, you can uh, uh, remove your slides. Sorry. Dr. Sanjay, yeah. So we should at least try not to go supracostal or try to avoid the supracostal punctures. I but never. at the same time, we should not be scared of supracostal punctures because the extent of uh, injury is not that much and you can very well manage. That's true. 